So when calibrating the X35 to get to the multi-tank calibration, if it's not open already, you touch this little sprocket and wrench on the side. So right now it's closed. Now it's open. I've got the configuration window. I touch on multi-tank calibration. Opens up the calibration method. To get the calibration wizard, I simply touch on automatic calibration. It opens up the wizard. Step one is explaining where I'm at and what I'm doing. Hit the yellow arrow to go to the next step. Then it takes me to step two where I run the actual product out of the tank and catch my sample weights. So right now I'm looking for 200 pounds, the acre out of tank one, tank two, 100 pounds, tank 425, and tank 500. So now when I activate my tanks, all my icons are gonna turn green on the X35. So now when you start your calibration, you'll see your revolutions going because it's counting the revolutions of the metering auger. It's also giving you the estimated weight. This is based on the last calibrated factor for this product that the X35 has saved. And this is what we're verifying through this calibration. The percentage that you're seeing on this line here, that's the PWM settings. Note that during calibration, if any of the activated metering motor valves are reading a minimum PWM of 15% or a maximum PWM of 95%, a calibration error alarm will pop up and you will not be able to achieve your requested metering rate. Select a different final drive range and recalibrate that meter. For more information, refer to your operator's manual. When you do a calibration, you want more, the more product the better. You want a minimum of 15 pounds of product. If you're out by a half a pound on five pounds or a half a pound on 15 pounds, you're gonna be three times as accurate at 15 pounds as you will be at five. Once you've got enough weight in the buckets, you can stop your calibration. So now you can see I've got my estimated weight, the revolutions that the metering augers turn during that calibration. So now if I hit the little yellow arrow in the bottom right corner, Go to the next page, and it's showing me the estimated weight, and now I can put the actual weight. So when I weigh the pails, my actual weight for tank one was 20.5 pounds, I enter that there. Tank two, my actual weight was 26. Tank four, actual weight of 18. Tank five, actual of 16.1. Hit my checkbox. Once I have all my weights entered, I can hit the yellow arrow again. It now shows me the tank number, the old factor, that was the one that was saved in the monitor from the last calibration. The new factor based on the information taking the weight that we've entered divided by the revolutions and the difference between the two. Then I can choose to save it or not. If I want to save it, I just touch on it. It changes to saved. So tank two, the old factor was 2.2. New factor is 2.019 for a difference of 8.21. Tank four, old factor was 0.22. New factor is 0.245 for a difference of 11.32. You can save or not. And the last one, the old revolution was 0.22, new factor is 0.22, no change, no need to save. If you're out by more than 10% from your last calibration, there's a chance that we could have made a mistake. Um, the different number in calibration takes into effect different product densities. If the last product was a little bit denser or less dense, um, seed treatments, the cleanliness of the seed, and also if there's anywhere in the metering auger system anywhere, it'll factor for that. Typically, if you're out by more than 10%, it would be recommended to redo that calibration and see if you get a better number. And then you'd know whether you made a mistake or not. When you're done, hit the green checkbox and it takes you out of the multi-tank calibration wizard.